Welcome to my video. Today I'm going to talk about whether or not marijuana is a gateway drug. And that's a fairly divisive issue. And I think a lot of the reason for that is people look at this question differently. I also find that there's a few different types of people when it comes to this debate. There's the people who maybe have never tried drugs or are against drugs or whatever, and they definitely think it's a gateway drug. Then there are people who have smoked marijuana, but maybe haven't done other things, or maybe have done other things, but didn't really care too much for it. And they think it's definitely not a gateway drug. Then there are people who have smoked marijuana, have also done other drugs, may have had problems with those drugs, and have had addiction problems, have had friends die, have gone to jail, all that stuff. Those people, I find, usually go back again to thinking that marijuana is a gateway drug. I myself started smoking weed when I was about 16 years old, and by the age of 21, I was uh, smoking crystal meth. And in between that time, I tried all sorts of drugs. I'd never really had an addiction problem, except I did with weed. I just never considered it a problem because I genuinely think, and I still do to this day, that it uh, improves my life. Maybe not improve in any significant way, but I don't think it makes it worse. Or maybe it does, considering what I'm about to say. I do think marijuana is a gateway drug. Maybe it's just the way I'm looking at this question, but I'll just explain it from my point of view. When I started smoking marijuana, and a lot of people will say that marijuana is not an addicting drug, and I'm not sure where people get that idea because it definitely is a very psychologically addicting drug. When I was 16 or 17, it didn't take me long from the first time I smoked to where I was smoking every day and have been for <laughs> the last 15 or 16 years. But it, I was at that point in no time. I noticed that when I was without weed, like if I came home from work or school and I didn't have weed, it would really suck. I would be depressed, nothing would be fun. I'd play video games or something maybe, but I'd be like, this sucks. Like, what's the point of this if it's not enjoyable? And so I'd spend time like looking to get weed or, or I'd just be depressed and sad. And I don't know if that's typical for everyone, but that's how it was for me. I was really psychologically dependent on it. And the depression I got from that wasn't uh, serious or anything like that. It wasn't gonna ruin my life. I realized during editing that it was serious. Even though it wasn't as bad as it would be later, I was still really young. And being depressed at 15 or 16 years old is a big deal. I don't think marijuana has the potential to ruin your life, but it can be seen as a step along the path of addiction. But ultimately, we choose to go down that path. We're responsible for our own choices, and we always have a choice. The way I see it, you can't blame an object. And the depression I got from that wasn't uh, serious or anything like that. It wasn't going to ruin my life or anything like that. But I don't have to worry about that now because weed is pretty cheap and I'm an adult, so I got unlimited weed now. Young Dustin would have been in heaven because he was working like 10 hours at minimum wage and, you know, weed was like a precious commodity. And I used to get my girlfriend at the time to take it from her dad who had it like hidden in his shed and she would like steal his weed for me. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ken, if you're watching this. And I suspect that you are probably watching this, but thank you, Ken. Also, I remember this guy one time, he was a really nice guy. One time he came down, he was gonna have a beer with me, I guess. And, uh, you know, maybe Bond. And uh, he had two beers in his hand and he goes to hold them up to me. Like he was just passing me one. He had them both in his hand though. And in my like crazy addict mind, I'm like, two beers, wow, what a nice guy. So I grabbed them both. I'm like, thanks, Ken. And then he, I forget what he said. He's probably just like, oh, okay, but he left. And then later I realized, wait a second, he was, oh, he was wanting to have a beer with me. And that's funny. <laughs> so anyway, when I was without weed, I'd be sad. And that was sort of like a very scaled down version of chemical drug addiction, really. And so what was happening without realizing it is I was developing an addict mindset. I was teaching my brain that you don't have to do all this stuff in life to be happy. You can just use something and be happy. And my brain really got accustomed to that. And as I got older and my depression started getting worse and worse and weed wasn't doing anything to combat that, uh, you know, I would, I would drink or party and stuff uh, to use as a crutch for the depression. And as it kept getting worse and worse, 
I started doing other drugs and more serious drugs. It's like a nasty cycle. And then you get to the end of the food chain. And then it's like, okay, which one do I want? Heroin, meth, or crack? And I tried all of those drugs before. Heroin, I couldn't get into it really. And then crack, I didn't like either. Too expensive anyways. I couldn't really afford to be addicted to either of those as, at the level I wanted to be high. The thing about meth is it's super cheap and anyone making minimum wage can pretty much afford to be high 24 seven. As an addict, it's one of the best things about the drug. As uh, a reasonable person, it's one of the worst things about the drug. But when I tried it, it was like, yes, yes please. And this is the one, just yes, please. It hijacks your dopamine system and just exploits it to a ridiculous degree. Uh, I think it really filled that void I was having, which you can fix that naturally, you know, by doing human things dating and career and all that stuff whatever i use meth but the effectiveness of it and then the downside of it it starts to tilt well, the first year or two was like bliss kind of kind of while i'm high and i'm not focusing on anything i feel good but then everything else was shit and then the shittier parts would get shittier and then the good parts would get shittier everything got shittier <laughs> And just the nature of it changes year after year and year after year. It keeps changing every year. It was like different, you know, the high would be different. I would, my behavior when I was high would change year over, oops, year over year. Anyways, that's sort of the trajectory my life took. I don't use crystal meth anymore. You know, I like to have a drink now. I still smoke a lot of weed. There's, you hear those geese? This Canada, baby. We got geese. And uh, anyways, uh, yeah, I still smoke a lot of weed. I drink, you know, here and there. I drink quite a bit, but I got it all under wraps. Uh, if I'm at a party with friends and there's something there, uh, I don't see myself saying no, you know. I still like to have fun and all of that. I'm not like totally straight edge now. <laughs> Far from it, actually. Um, but in comparison to like how I was in my 20s, early 20s mostly, it's just not even a comparison. And when people say like, talk about weed being like, sometimes the doctor would be like, well, do you smoke weed? Well, that could be part of the problem. It's like, shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. In comparison to crystal meth addiction, it's like, it's like vitamin C. Like, 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 it's like vitamin C. Vitamin C. Vitamin C. Vitamin C. Vitamin C. Vitamin C. We all love Brad Pitt. He's so cool. Brad Pitt. We can't not like Brad Pitt. Pitt. Paul is dead. Paul is dead. Paul died. He's not alive anymore. Ooh, secret message. Like if I can't tell whether something improves or detriments me, then it's probably not a big deal. But with chemical drug addiction, it's apparent that your life is going to shit. You know, yeah, brother. you can't function at all in society. The whole stance on this question, whether marijuana is a gateway drug or not, I say it is. When you get addicted to weed, you're not just developing a weed problem. You're developing an addiction problem. So the way the dopamine reward system works is dopamine will be released when you do something that's good for you generally. And your brain will take note of that in memory. Okay, this will lead to happiness. So create desire for this. But drugs are natural and they mess with the way that system works. They bring in all this dopamine, but it's not a good thing. It's dopamine from a bad thing. So your brain thinks that it's a good thing. So it's telling you do more of this. This is great stuff. And any substance that's addicting, whether it's harmful or not, will create that situation in your brain. And not everyone who smokes weed is going to start, you know, shooting crack in their eyeballs. But if you don't smoke marijuana, your chances of becoming a crack addict are much, much reduced. And of course, there's different ways to look at this question. Like I said earlier, if you're the type of person who's not predisposed to addiction in their genes or life situation, you're happy, well-adjusted and all that, and you smoke weed once, you're likely not gonna become an, a crystal meth addict, of course. But for people that are predisposed to it, the parents were addicts, maybe where they grew up, all these you know, external factors that can lead to addiction. If you're a person with those, and then you smoke weed and you like it and it makes you feel good, then you're gonna start using other stuff. And those are the type of people that 
will end up becoming chemical drug addicts. And it all starts with weed. That's what I was saying in my last video. If you're happy and you've never done drugs, but you're curious, but you're happy, don't even bother. And if you're going to bother, just stick to psychedelics. And weed. And when I was you know, young, I knew that too. I wasn't naive. I was, I mean, I wasn't in some ways, but not in that regard. I knew that when I was going to, when I use this stuff, it's addicting. I knew that I was going to have to pay a price for it one day. It could be a very high price. I knew I'd have to cross that bridge one day. I knew it wasn't going to end in a happy ending. I knew all that going in. I was young though, and I didn't care. And I thought, what's the worst thing that'll happen? It's in 10 years. My life is so fucked up. I can't get better. I'll just keep using till I die or I'll kill myself. And if not, you know, then I'll get better and live a happy life after. But even though the second option is the one that's playing out, thankfully, it still wasn't worth all the pain in the last decade to get to where I am now. It really wasn't. And I wish I understood that when I was younger. Like, I always knew it would be bad. I just wish I knew how bad it feels. Like, when you get to a certain point where you've been up for days and you go to get high and you take a hit of crystal meth and you don't feel anything and you're, you're feeling like shit, <clears throat> that's a scary moment when you when the drug you need isn't working anymore because you're doing it so much that when it, that started happening to me, that was really scary because that feeling is like, uh, because that feeling of knowing your life is in that situation, seeing it slip away from you without having any dopamine in your brain to unnaturally low levels. Your brain would never let it get that low is, is indescribable. It's it's what it's just like, uh, the most Spit it out, bro. like hopeless, I guess maybe is the closest word that comes to it, but that's not even close. Anyways, I'm not going to preach. Everyone knows drugs are bad. Even I did when I started. That's it. That's my point of view. I think marijuana definitely is a gateway drug. And when I bring this up to drug addicts or recovered drug addicts or whatever, people who have, you know, gone through it, they almost always say, yeah, definitely a gateway drug. And I remember in high school when everyone just smoked weed, we were all like, it's not a gateway drug, man. There's no way it's a gateway drug. And we didn't know whether it was or not. We just thought weed was cool. And when they say it's a gateway drug, like it was just rhetoric, bullshit or something. But, and a lot of it is, a lot of the education on drugs is bullshit. But that part, I really don't think it is. And yes, I know there are exceptions to every rule. There are some people that have never smoked weed and will die of a heroin overdose. There are people that will smoke weed and never touch another drug again. Of course, of course. I'm just saying almost every hardcore drug addict smoked weed at the beginning. And then also I would suspect I've never done like a survey or anything, but I would suspect a large portion of all of them would uh, agree with me. So that's it guys. Thanks for watching. Peace out. I don't want to hang up. I love you. You hang up first. No, you hang up first. Okay, fine. I'll hang up first, but you next time.